first game of 2020 and it was an absolute shambles here at the Emirates, man. What can I say? Um, we knew what to expect from Arsenal. We knew they'll be at the races. We knew that under Arteta they're going to be intense, they're going to be organised. We've seen that in a couple of games that he's had. And it was like our players were just still at New Year's Eve. That's what I felt. I felt they were next to me um, on the decks or at the event I was at last night. That's what I really did feel. They were lethargic, they were slow, their energy was, was down. And we just didn't have an answer. And then individual errors started costing us. The first couple of minutes, literally, we had a couple of counter-attacks. We actually looked quite bright. When I say couple of minutes, I mean two or three minutes. Kalashinac gets booked early. You're thinking Dan James is going to have a good game here. Just keep getting at him, make it difficult. And we just took our foot off the gas from then. Um, well, I can't even really say our foot was ever on the gas. Um, midfield, I thought that Zaka and Torreira, we made it far too easy for them. Fred and, and McTominay, Fred and Matic didn't really grab the game by the scruff of the neck and really impose us and Luke Shaw I mean I, I, I don't like scapegoating players or, or going in too hard on individuals that's not really my style but I, I call it as I see it the first goal comes from his side he just went to sleep he went to sleep the ball went over to his side and see Pepe has an easy tap in in the end um, and Juan Basaka I thought he, he got exposed a little bit down that right hand side as well and Aubameyang linking up there and and Ozil got played in. I think it was Maguire that was, that was playing him on. And I wasn't impressed with Maguire today as well. I thought he didn't have his best game. And some people going as far as to say as, you know, why did we even sell Lindelof, uh, uh, sell Smalling or, or loan him, should I say? But apart from that, I, the, the application just wasn't there. And the, the biggest thing for me is, is that we keep seeing this. We keep seeing this level of inconsistency um, from this side. Jesse Lingard coming in, you might have thought it might have been the dance floor again for him, you know, a little gamble on him to, to play today. Non-existent, he had a really poor game, dragged off very early in the, in, in the first half. Um, we were just non-existent. I, I look at the front three, Rashford. Rashford against um, Maitland-Niles, did he really get the ball that much to be able to go at him? Probably not. We didn't really play in a way that allowed us to get at, at Arsenal's full-backs. But even when he did, he just wasn't, I didn't see him interested in getting at Maitland-Niles. I, I didn't see it. Overall, we just made it really comfortable for them. It was a mixture of Arsenal being organised and doing well and being intense, but we, they didn't have to be that good to beat us today. And that, for me, is the biggest key. When, it, when we went 1-0 down very early, what was it, the 10th minute, what sort of reaction was we going to show? And I looked at our players and I looked at us immediately after conceding the goal as well. We gave the ball away straight away. And then we can see the second from a set-piece, De Gea. <sighs> David De Gea for me right now is, um, he's like he's annoying me. I love the guy, he's been a fantastic servant at the club, but the, the patch of form he's in right now, he's, he's so up and down, it's almost, he's almost as, as inconsistent as our form right now. I mean, the ball gets kind of dropped in on a six yard line, it looked like he kind of just pushed it, like either come out and catch it, come out and punch it, all right, it's at a mid wrist, so come and do something. But it's like he just patted the ball onto the back of Lindelof. We looked like we was at sixes and sevens. And Socrates has an easy tap in. And then from then, it could have been a third or a fourth. I mean, there was a time when De Gea had the ball and he's tried to play it out or, or clear it. He's just kicked it straight to, to Pepe and he's gone on to hit the post. So it could have been, it could have been a brace for him. And it, we really needed that half-time whistle. I was worried it could have been threes and fours. Second half, some United fans may look at that and think we were, we were better. But that was because Arsenal didn't have to do anything. We played right into their hands. That's when you're going to see the worst of United, when you have to sit back, let them have the ball um, and say, come on, United, break us down. And Arsenal did that. Their game management was spot on. We didn't have any answers. When Jesse came off and, and Andreas came on, he, he, Andreas looked a little bit better. I'll give him that. He did. But it just went from bad to worse. I think Arsenal just were, were, were rigid in their shape. They were structured. They were organised. They just said, right, I'll tell you what, United come at us. They tried to counter a couple of times and we kept nicking in and nicking the ball off them. So they probably frustrated with that. But they didn't have to do anything. The game was already run from the first half. It was about game management for them. Did I really truly believe we can come back from that? I didn't. I really didn't. And it's so disappointing, especially after getting a couple of decent wins against... Um, Newcastle and, and Burnley. Yes, you expect us to beat those teams, but we still have to go and do it. And then you're thinking, what kind of account of ourselves can we give here at Arsenal? And we just got outworked, we got outfought, we got out tactics, we got out everything today. Um, we just was not at the races. Like I said, it looked like our players were, were, were still celebrating New Year's Eve. So, so disappointed today. Um, and I think Luke Shaw will look at that performance and think, that wasn't my best game. And I think Solskjaer's got to be looking at Brandon Williams. I, I even would have started Ashley Young today. I was, I was surprised to see maybe Luke Shaw start there. It just did not work out. Um, Martial, I thought he tried. He tried to make things happen. But overall, 
it just wasn't good enough from from all of them. I'm not going to single out um, too many individuals because I, I just think collectively as a team, as a unit, we just was not good enough today across the whole park. And that's collectively as a unit. Mason came on. I don't think he had the best of games. He tried. It was just there just was not, not really much to feed off. You know, it was just one of them games where if we were going to score, it had to be early in that half to put Arsenal under some serious pressure. But what what annoys me the most is the fact that Arsenal was just so comfortable for last periods. They never really, I think, if you ask any Arsenal fans, they probably never really thought that that we would score, put them under pressure. And that Arsenal don't keep clean sheets. They don't. They don't keep clean sheets, and they've gone and done it here today. Um, at Man United's expense, so very difficult to take. Awful performance, and we roll on to um, to what to, to Watford to Wolves. I'm not looking forward to that at all. I mean, you're looking at it, how we're playing away from home against teams that that can play. It's not looking. It's looking bleak. It's looking bleak, and I think Norwich to come as well at home. We've, we've got to win that. So onwards and upwards. Hopefully upwards, but very very disappointed today. I'm not in the best of moods to be fair. I've had to capture the fans' um, opinion, and before I talk about the game, I want to talk about this coward. Yeah, this, this guy in a balaclava, hooded up, coward, who thought it would be good, who thought he would be a big man, yeah, and come and assault Josh. You're ashamed, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. Yeah, this is what it's getting to. I don't mind talking to people who want to have an opinion, that's absolutely fine. But to assault somebody, he was carted off by police, and rightly so, hopefully he got arrested. I don't know what happened to this idiot. But carry yourself on. That's all I'm going to say on that. There was a coward, and he knows who he is, and he knows what he's done. We'll see when we see him again. I don't even like to, to talk too much about that, but that's what kind of mood I'm in right now. How dare you? On again, um, it's a bit of a ball fest, to be honest. It's a bit of a ball fest because we weren't really at the races. I thought we were comfortable. I thought we were comfortable. So, in fact, let me, let me touch on the positives. I thought we defended very well. I want to start on the positives. Don't want to be accused of being toxic or negative. Let's start with the, um, the positives today. I thought Brandon Williams held his own today. Uh, it was a big test for him today. Traore is in good form. Yes, he can be erratic. He can be erratic, but he's a, he's a beast. He's a powerhouse. He's, he's an absolute unit. And um, I didn't fear for Brandon Williams, but I was relishing seeing him have that challenge against Traore. I think he did well against him. You're never going to stop Traore getting in for 90 minutes, but you can limit him. And I think Brandon Williams did that where he could. Um, and he gave a good account of himself. Romero, I thought, was a positive as well. He made a fantastic save after about five, ten minutes, um, keeping out Wolves, which I thought was really good. And a few commanding, not saves, but, you know, come, come, come in the command in his box. I thought he did really well. Um, and hopefully he's not injured. Um, he did go down for a while. He's, he, he managed to see out the game. So that was a positive. So as a back line, I thought we did pretty well. Harry Maguire played against um, the kid for Wolves. I think it was one of his first games. He marshaled him very well. And even Jimenez, there was one time he, 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 Jimenez got the better of him. But other than that, I thought we, we defended very well. Midfield, I thought we were composed um, and we were in control. But it was just a common theme. We just could not create a damn thing on the balance of the play I think both teams will look at that and think you know what we weren't at the races it's a positive that the last positive as well is that <laughs> I'm standing outside this statue and we haven't lost normally we come to Wolves it's a difficult game and we can't buy a win here we still haven't won but at least we haven't lost that's 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 another positive um, I think Wolves will look at that themselves and think by their own um, admission they weren't good in the first half they wasn't. They really wasn't good in the first half. I, I, you know, I, I think Nuno would know that. That's why he brought on Jimenez at, uh, at half time as well. Um, first half, I'm, I'm struggling to think of a shot on target in the first half. Did we have one? Bro, no shots on target the whole game. Don't get assisted. No shots on target the whole, the whole game. game? Oh, yeah, because we hit the... Put well, there you go. Miles has just reminded me. <laughs> there you go. No shots on target the whole game. And that, and that it just sums up the performance in terms of the final third. Yes, we were comfortable in possession. And yes, we... we we defended well, but we just can't create for shit. And it's, that's what the most frustrating thing is, we cannot create. Um, it's a common theme. I, I, it took me a while, a lot of the times, to work out what formation we were playing. I felt Mason Greenwood was very frustrated. Um, and yes, he can't go up and play against three centre, centre halves. I get that, so he's got to drift off the front. But he was on the wing at times, completely vacating the space. Sometimes Matt was the furthest forward. Sometimes Andreas was the furthest forward. It just looked a bit disjointed to me. In the second half, I thought we gave the impotence to, to, to Wolves. They came out stronger, which we knew they would. Um, did they lay, lay siege to the goal? No, but they looked the more likely of scoring out of the two teams at the time. Um, I think the fact that Romero went down um, and needed some treatment, that probably helped us because at that time, Wolves were starting to build momentum. Um, but other than that, it was just it was a pretty poor game. I thought Daniel James, I, 
Again, there wasn't much space in behind. They sat back, so he didn't really probably shine as much as he could. He put a couple of good balls into the box, which there was nobody following up. I thought that um, I already touched on Greenwood. And I just think it was a game of frustration. And, and, but more importantly, it was a game of similar themes, similar concepts, similar patterns of play. There was a lot of people around me that were just so frustrated when we're getting to that final third. The, 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 the lack of willingness to try and pass forward, pass between the lines, get players running at goal. It just wasn't there today. It just wasn't there. And the last thing we needed, I did predict in a road trip, I thought it'd be a replay. And that's what we got. That's the last thing we need right now. There's so many games coming up in a short space of time with so many injuries. Um, you just, we just, it was the last thing we needed. It's good that we're still in the competition, so we haven't lost. That is a positive. But like I said, we just don't need this fixture pile up in an in a already very busy January. The substitutions. Solskjaer went to a 5-3-2. Um, I, I, I made it out to be. It took me a while to work it out. Um, the lot was there, and then uh, uh, right, right, right wing back, and then um, Ashley Young went and was, was like the third centre back, and it just it just didn't really work. I mean, Rashford came on; he probably should have done better. Um, I haven't seen that chance back; I've only seen it once. But I think he forced the safe and the keeper, and it went onto the onto the crossbar. Maybe could have taken that chance a bit sooner and slotted that away. But other than that, he wasn't really in the game. It was just it was disappointing. Fred come on for as much as he did well was for as much as he did badly. I thought I thought he was he had a mixed mixed game. Lost the ball a couple of times, but then won it back a couple of times very well as well. So look at the end of the day, it was it was a fairly boring game with not much quality in it. We feared the worst coming here. Well, I certainly did, especially with the, with the with the form we've got. That's you know we've played Wolves four times. And we haven't beaten them. We've, you know, well, we've played them. Yeah, was it three times here and, and once at Old Trafford? We've played them four times and, and still not beaten them. And now we've got to play Wolves twice in a very short space of time again at Old Trafford. So we're gonna to have to beat them sometime, and I mean, it has to be now. Um, we can't afford to drop points against them in the league. And obviously, if we want to get through to the fourth round FA Cup, we've got to make sure we beat them. So for me, the standouts in in, in a poor game was Brandon Williams and the fact that we defended well and the fact that we, we didn't crumble and, and give that guilt edge chance. I mean, I haven't seen back the disallowed goal, um, but it looked like obviously, obviously VAR's disallowed it. You never know VAR, how, how tight that decision was. I haven't seen that. Um, but yeah, th those are the positives, the fact that uh, you know we're still in the competition and we didn't crumble. But I don't want to say negatives, but the, the things to look at, the areas to look at is, is the same common themes when we just cannot create consistently in, in patterns of play. I just I just don't see that happening. Roll on Manchester City, Fred got a rest today. Um, Wan-Bissaka was rested today. Um, Luke Shaw was rested today. And you know what, against Man City, I want to see Brandon Williams start. I think he deserves a chance in a big game like that at home. And I really do. I, Luke Shaw, yes, he had a difficult time against Pepe. I, when I look back on it, it wasn't like Pepe rinsed him all game. I just think Luke Shaw had a bad game. but. You know, Brandon Williams, I just think he's just fearless and he just wants to go forward and make things happen. I'd love to see him start against City, but I don't think he will. The game's in a few days and I think the reason why Luke Shaw wasn't playing was that. Angel Gomez, I want to talk about him really quickly before I finish off. I don't understand why he can't get any minutes at all. I don't understand that. Um, you know, Lingard's not covered himself in glory. Andreas Pereira hasn't covered himself in glory. Mata hasn't in that number 10 position. Why has Gomez not even been given a chance? I don't get it. Um, I know he's out of contract in the summer and I can't see him um, signing again um, if he's not going to get any game time, especially in, in games like this or games where we've got games thick and fast, you know, two in a week and things like that, three in a week sometimes in such a short space of time and he still can't get any game time. It just doesn't add up to me. I, I was surprised to not see him even come off the bench today, in my opinion. Um, but my man of the match is Brandon Williams. I thought he was, he was good. Um, and he continues to grow into that role of left back and hopefully um, he'll continue to hit the heights. That's my, um, my, my man of the match. And like I said at the beginning of the video, didn't want to start on that, on that sour note, but that's what it's got to. I've, I've, I, there's been a lot being said on social media, a lot of idiots trying to spread lies and spread hate and stuff like that. You see from the fan camps today that we're just gathering opinions and some people think this, some people think that. That's all it is, is gathering opinions. If you do not like it, please do not watch. Nobody is forcing you to. But if you want to come and assault people and get in people's faces and wear balaclavas, then you're, you're an absolute embarrassment and you're shambles. And I tell you what, we're not scared. Let me tell you that. We're not scared. We're going to be at every game. And if you want to start, we're not here for a fight. We're not here for that, yeah, at all. If you want to start assaulting people and coming aggressive and, 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 and fighting and stuff, you just get carted off by the police. We're not interested. If you want to have a, a talk to us, to me, to anyone at the United Stand, we're happy to talk to anyone. We're not trying to convince any of you guys that 
you need to watch this and you need this in your life. We're just trying to convince you that some people convey their footballing opinion in this way. Some people consume their football in this way. I don't like the only way is Essex, so guess what? I don't watch it. It's as simple as that. Listen, I'm out of here and uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday, hopefully, with something to take to the Etihad in the second leg. Peace. Where do you start? Where do you start with that today? Um, we saw what we were able to do to City uh, earlier on in the league um, on the counter-attack. And what we saw today is a Pep Guardiola who was ruthless. He came with proper tactics, a proper plan um, and nullified us. He, and once you strip us of that counter-attack in play, we have nothing. Um, the alarm bells were there as soon as you saw the team sheet. Yes, we wanted to get behind the team so you don't want to be too negative beforehand because you always having your fingers crossed for a, a, a performance out the blue. But as soon as you see a midfield of Pereira and Fred with Lingard as a three, for me, I, I, I saw the alarm bells ring. I didn't even check City's midfield. I just knew whatever combination they put um, would, 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 would cause trouble. And then what we saw with Bernardo Silva dropping in off the false nine into the midfield, he went wondering. There wasn't even a number nine for them to mark between Lindelof and, and Jones. Bernardo Silva was just wandering all over the pitch, causing havoc. You had De Bruyne having the pick of the passes, the pick of the joy, just picking up space. He said he has an easy game against Arsenal at the Emirates a few weeks back when they were 3-0 up at half-time. This was even easier for him. Um, Jones coming into the side, he had to play, so I'm not going to try and scapegoat him, but he wasn't very good. I felt like the uncertainty between him and Lindelof, you could tell they, 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 they haven't played any football together. They both looked just as unsure as each other. That was a mess. Brandon Williams, hold your head high, son. Hold your head high. I thought you stood up and was counted for in a very, very difficult game. But on us, we just was not at it. I can take being inferior to City player for player because we know we are. Most teams City play by Liverpool, um, they're going to have in, they're going to have superior players to their opposition. What I can't take is lack of application. I saw it was so comfortable for City. I know you just can't go running after City um, and, and try and outpress them. But if you are going to press, we need to go in waves. It needs to be something that's practiced. It needs to be something that's rehearsed. I saw Mason Greenwood running his ass off at times. Trying to, trying to press, but then no one was going with him. Then I saw one time Daniel James doing it and no one going with him. Then I saw Rashford deciding to do it. There was just nothing in it. Lingard behind him. Lingard, listen, you don't want to bash players. You don't want to jump on players, but you have to talk about bad form. You have to talk about bad form. There's talks of Jesse Lingard signing up with Rayola now looking for a move potentially, I don't know, or trying to get a bumper contract here. On his current form, he hasn't deserved it. He has not deserved it. I thought he was atrocious in the first half he really was there was a time all he had he had a simple pass to just control no one around him misplaced the pass sorry misplaced his touch it just went from bad to worse in that midfield area i thought Pereira was just running around almost like a headless chicken trying to make something happen fred was doing what fred tries to do which is try and you know feed the ball into into attacking spaces quickly and it just did not work. City just did not get out of second gear, first gear. And it was embarrassing. You know, the, the, the second goal, Lindelof, again, the ball's up in the air. I think he missed his challenge. Then he's trying to run back. He's out of position. He doesn't know um, who's in front of him. I think, or was it behind him? I can't even remember. But he, he, he doesn't stop the run. He tries to slide in, completely misses the ball. Mares has an easy tap in. The third goal, yes, you can call it unlucky because it's hit off Pereira and gone in, but just the way that they were in, the way that they were in down the flanks. Um, De Bruyne sits Phil Jones down on his ass, skins him. De Gea makes a decent save and it bounces off, off, off him. And then that, at that point, I honestly feared the worst. It, it was signs of, 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 of them scoring six here all over again. People, I, I don't know if a lot of, uh, people haven't said it in the fan cams, but I, I don't know what it's going to be like on social media, what you guys think. For me, I'm not trying to hear any energy of, but we played better in the second half. I heard that Solskjaer said, yeah, we, we picked it up in the second half. That was game management from City. Don't, don't get that twisted. Don't, don't get that twisted. Ricky mentioned it in, in, his, in his fan cam sort of saying, you know, what do you think that City just passed the ball around the back and took the foot off the gas? Well, I think they did take their foot off the gas. I think they were in complete control. They got very, very sloppy um, in what, what led to our goal, to the counter-attack that, that, that led to it. They, they, were, they were quite sloppy. Other than that, and then after that, there was no reaction because City were firmly back in control again. You can't let little isolated moments of a game trick you into believing that you, you got a foothold in it, you know? You, you can't. We all want us to come back, but I'm not kidding myself there. That's not what I saw. What we saw was one manager who is obviously one of the best managers in the world and another manager who's unclear on his tactics, who's unclear 
on a style of play, on a way of playing. And today sparked a lot of angry reaction from fans. Yes, there's going to be a section of us, and I don't, in fact, no, I don't want to put it into sections and divide us, but there's going to be some people who believe that, look, what do you expect? It's City, it's City at home. Um, or it, it, we're playing Manchester City, they've got better players than us all over the park. But if you look at it in the context of our own performance, I get it, like I said at the beginning of this, of this roundup, I can take losing, I can take that, but having no style of play, having no pattern of play, having no obvious style, I just, I just didn't see it. And then on top of that, you, you feed in the lack of confidence from these players that we saw and the capitulation. It was just embarrassing, it really, really was. And it could have been, it should have been probably 5-0 at halftime. It should have been, if, if Raheem Sterling had his shooting boots on it, it, it probably would have been five. For me, are we out of the Carabao Cup? Look, I know we went to PSG uh, and did a madness and it worked, but for me, I don't see it. I do not see it. That's at the end of the month, but there's so many games in between that. We've got Norwich coming up here. The games are coming thick and fast and the, the squad's looking depleted. The squad's looking jaded. They're looking tired. They're looking lethargic. Um, I'm just not seeing the energy. I thought Marcus Rashford today, yes, he kept in the side, but he... He didn't look at the races. Yeah, he got his goal, took his goal well, which was pretty much the only chance he had. But other than that, he wasn't really in the game. Dan James, I do feel it for Dan James because it's not his fault. His style of play doesn't suit. His attributes don't suit our style of play, whatever our style of play is now, which is basically try and get in behind. There's not any space in behind. We, you know, we had one long, either diagonal or a straight ball, bypassing the midfield, trying to get into space in the wings. That's all we had. Lumping it up to Mason Greenwood, who I thought, was, was struggling at times today because of the service into him. Lumping up to him to get gobbled up by Otamendi. Fernandinho just sweeping up casually. He had an easy game. He, 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 you know, he won't even need to wash his, wash his kit afterwards. He was that composed. So an, an embarrassing performance. And we've got Norwich and we have to win. We have to win. We've got to get back to winning ways very quickly. It's looking bleak. Um, Wolves again in the FA Cup. I, I mean, I, I just fear. I just fear for the rest of this month. I really do. I don't like being too reactionary after results, but you can only look at it in context of what's been happening. And since the start of 2020, we have not been good at all. Awful away to Arsenal, average um, away to Wolves, well, below par, not a shot on target, and shocking here today. That's three games and it hasn't been good. I haven't seen the post-match interview um, from Solskjaer, but I'm, I'm going to take a look at it. We need to spend in January and we, we need serious reinforcements. That midfield, I mean, Matic, the balance would have been better with Matic in there. I agree. When Matic did come on, yeah, he, he played a few more passes. He looked after it a bit more. But then there were other times when he was too slow and, and, and taking his time on it too much. Probably because of lack of options. I don't always blame... For me, I don't always blame the player in possession. A lot of the times we get frustrated as Man United fans, especially when you're in a stadium, when you want us to pass forward quickly, you want us to make something happen. You, you, you want to see urgency. But I, I don't know. I want to say we all play football. But I've played football at, at, at half-decent standard. And... If you haven't got any options on the ball, you have to keep it. You have to keep it. If your style of play doesn't give you marauding wingers, doesn't give you fullbacks bombing on, doesn't give you people in triangles offering um, with one twos to bounce it off, you have to keep the ball. Because then if the person tries to force the pass to the pass that isn't there, then we start throwing our hands up. So, yes, I get it. There were times today, I'm not, dis I'm not, dis uh, I'm not sticking up or standing up for... The, 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 the whole of the performance because it was a bad performance and yes too many times we did go backwards but I'm just saying in other moments there are times when it is better to keep the ball and I, I felt the frustration for a lot of the players today yes they weren't good enough across the park but I saw Brandon Williams wanting to make something happen his first look is up what can I do he's looking I've got to go back I need to keep the ball what am I going to do hit it 20 yards 25 yards diagonal and just give it away Phil Jones he looks so unsure he looks so unsure on the ball, which is what we've come to expect sometimes of Phil Jones. Um, a few shaky moments, but every time he got the ball, he had his hands out here saying, well, what can I do? And then he's kind of throwing it, like hitting the air, passing it back to De Gea. De Gea going back to Lindelof. Lindelof saying, what do I do? And also from the goal kicks, we're persistent on passing out from the back. And it's just, it's just a clueless style of play. And it's a common, common frustrating theme. Roll on to Norwich in a few days back here. Um, hopefully we get the job done. We need to bounce back. We need to bounce back and quick. Okay, so we're here inside Hotel Football. It's chucking it down out there. It's pissing down the rain. So coming here just to round off. Uh, good 4-0 win, man. It was something that was much needed today. Um, yeah, you can't get carried away because you know, Norwich are rock bottom of the league, but it was about application. It was about how we were going to go about breaking them down. And I thought we did that well today. So he said it in his fan cam, one matter. I thought he was the difference today. Um, we always say that you know his legs are gone or against better opposition in quicker games that maybe it's not the right game for him but I still think that 
he still does possess attributes that are, are much needed. He, he, he doesn't lose the class that he has, the vision that he has, the touch he has, and the pass that he had. Um, you know, he sets up Rashford after, what, 20, 25 minutes? Um, and that sets us off. I, even, even before that, I thought our tempo was really good. Um, Matic coming in there as well. Calm and influence. I thought him and Fred did well to just keep sustained attacks, keep us keep keep Norwich pending. Literally, Harry Maguire and Lindelof were probably ten yards in into the Norwich half uh, almost at all times. They had no counter attack apart from towards the end of the half where Cantwell had that shot. So we knew what to expect, and I liked the application. Martial, to be fair, he was off the boil first half. It wasn't quite sticking with him. He was trying to link up with Rashford. It just wasn't quite happening um, for him. But he kept at it. Um, the first goal came from Rashford, and that is what one matter does. I thought he was instrumental. Andreas Pereira as well. I was, uh, I was pleased with what he did today. I thought he was good on the ball. Um, his decision making actually was a lot better than it has been in in previous games. Um, in in a game where they got a lot of the ball, they, uh, you know, Norwich allowed us to have so much time and space, which I was quite. Surprised about. I know they're not playing with a lot of confidence right now in the rock bottom of the league, but I thought they would have showed us a little bit more than that. Having said that, it was important for us to, to put them to the sword and to keep the energy. And you're thinking, once that first goal came, you kind of knew the floodgates would open from then. I've got to talk about Brandon Williams. I have to. This kid, he's just going from strength to strength. Um, where we were sitting in the first half, Miles was sitting just behind me. And I said to Miles, every, every time in the first half when Brandon Williams plays, I'm so glad I sit where I sit, right, right on the halfway line, about six rows back in the Sir Alex Ferguson, and you can just see him going up and down that flank. The willingness for, with him, which I keep saying in every single game he plays, to get forward and beat a man, even when he doesn't have the ball, to open up space and leave space in behind him, or even if he's coming off that left-hand side to try and make things happen infield. I just thought he was everywhere. He was up and down that flank, defensively sound, and obviously has that passion and that drive and determination to go forward. So I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be a really good player for us, man. And, you're looking at him and Luke Shaw, and when I see Brandon Williams, I just see a player that is fearless. I see a player that wants to take risks. I see a player that is tenacious. I see a player that's more mobile. That's, that's what I see, as, as well as obviously being younger and fresher and potentially more hungry, I don't know. But that's what I see in him. And, and for me, I don't think there's a decision anymore. I, I, I know that he can't play every single game. There's, there's games coming thick and fast, and he's young. You can't just put a young player in and, and, and play them every single game. I get it, it's his breakthrough season. So I'm not saying he should, he, 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 he shouldn't, he should stay inside for the rest of the games, but I think he should be the number one left back, I do. Um, yes, Luke Shaw's gonna have to come in here and there, and we're gonna have to rotate. It looks like Ash Young's gonna be out the door. He wasn't even on the bench today. Um, for me, it's a bad decision to let him go in January. I wouldn't do that. I would definitely keep him till the summer. He's always fit, he's always ready to go and can fill in across left back and right back. Luke Shaw with his injuries, you never know. And Brandon Williams is young, so he could get burnt out, could pick up a muscular injury. We don't know. For me, I'll definitely keep Ash Young until the summer at least. Let him sign a pre-agreement with Inter Milan, that's fine. But I'll definitely keep him. But between him and between Brandon, Brandon Williams, I'm sure, the output is, is, is far greater from, from Brandon Williams. I'm only calling it as I see. It's not an agenda. It's nothing to do with Luke Shaw being out, out of, not, in, not in shape and all of, that, all of that stuff that goes around on social media. I'm just talking about pure footballing facts. And what I see from Brandon Williams is way better than what I see from Luke Shaw, in my opinion. Good to see Maguire back in today. I thought he marshaled it well with Lindelof. Lindelof, I was impressed with him in terms of his passes forward. I mean, that's what he kind of built his reputation on at United. We've always said he's been quite good on the ball. He's, he's quite a good passer of the ball. Uh, and he showed that today, but he did have a lot of time and space to do that, and I expect it. For Fred and Matic, like I said, they, they, they made things tick. They made things tick. Um, and that leads us into the front three. I mean, Rashford's he's going from strength to strength. I think that's 14 goals for the season in the Premier League. Um, and he's going from strength to strength. He, he, he might not be... What I like about Rashford now, which is actually more of a plus, he might not be in the game in terms of making things happen, taking people on, constantly beating people, but he's getting on the end of chances and he's finishing them and he's getting accumulation of goals. Well taken penalty as well, which was won by Brandon Williams. And I was worried, I was a bit worried because you saw what Tim Krul done when we played them at Carroll Road. He saved a penalty from Rashford, then saved another one from Martial straight away. Saved one from Aubameyang against Arsenal, which got retaken and then scored. But, so we know he's good between the sticks when it comes to, to penalties. And um, to, to, to dispatch that how we did, uh, and, and Krul went the same way, showed what a good penalty that was. And that gets me on to Mason Greenwood. This guy, honestly, <laughs> there wasn't a doubt in my mind when he picked up that ball outside the 18-yard box, travelled a couple of yards, got it onto his left foot, that there wasn't going to be anything other than a goal. The thing is with Green, Greenwood is that he's just so clinical and he knows what he's doing. He knows where the goal is and he just wants to shoot on sight. I, I keep saying it every time Mason plays, shoot on sight. 
and to put that in the bottom corner from there was was just fantastic. So 4-0 win, you can't really say much more than that. Brilliant performance, or well, a workmanlike performance against a very, very poor Norwich side who pretty much looked doomed for relegation um, for me. Um, so yeah, we roll on to Wolves midweek on Wednesday. I'd love to see Brandon Williams start. I'd, I'd, would I go with the same team? Maybe start Greenwood in there, but you know, Mata, I, that's what another thing I want to talk about is, is, is it should matter be used more often. Should it be used more often? He's, he's, he's doing well in these types of games. You know, surely he's got, he can unlock, he can unlock Wolves. Why not? I, I don't see why not. So yes, we always, we know that there's limitations in his game as he's getting older, but I still think, you know, when people like Ricky and Miles and other fans do say a lot that Mata still has quality. It's not like he just hasn't got it. And in effect, he's actually got more quality on the ball than Pereira. Well, Miles My better quality than Pereira. He can still pick that final pass. He might not be as mobile as Pereira and get about the pitch as well, but he plays with this and I think that's fine. I, I don't mind him playing in the number 10 position. Um, I thought he did well against Wolves um, at Molyneux. He was trying to make things happen. So I think he should probably he should start. I would start him um, uh, against Wolves. Dan James coming off the bench as well. That's not what you want to see um, as a fullback. You know, you're 4-0 down, I think, at the time. Was it 3-0? I can't remember. I think it's 3-0 um, at the time. You don't want to see a Dan James coming on. That is exactly when you want to use his types of attributes. And I thought Solskjaer today got his spot on. He, he made the right changes at the right time. And what he also did, is um, the application was good. You know, the, the team he set out was good. Bringing in Matter on that side to have that invention coming off. You know Matter's not going to stay on the right hand side and go past a, uh, um, a fullback. He's going to come in off that side and make things happen. And that is what he did. So very impressed with him. So big up to Solskjaer for getting it spot on today. My man of the match, I'm going to give it to Matter. Two assists, two assists. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Um, closely followed by Brandon Williams and a, another brace for, for, for Ashford. It could have, been, could have been either of those three, but I'm going to go with Matter. Doesn't get as much game time as the others, but every time he comes in, he's, he's neat, he's tidy, and he knows what he's doing. And two assists for him, I think he, he settles on, it, on, on, on the way. Mason Greenwood as well, nearly at double figures for the season as well. What a great breakthrough season it's been for him. Roll on Wolves and roll on next Premier League game of Liverpool. Peace. Listen, man, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just happy that we beat Wolves. I, I am. Um, I said, I did predict it'll be tight. It'll be cagey. We'd nick it. I said 2-1. I did feel that Wolves would score. And Wolves did score early on after about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. It looked like the writing could be on the wall and VAR saved our asses, man. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've seen it back. It did hit Jimenez's arm, but the rules are the rules with how it goes, whether it's, you know, whether what, what you think about it. But... You're thinking, oh, what's going to happen here now? And for me, Wolves, I saw one, I saw one, right, this is what I saw. I saw one team that's very well drilled and knows exactly what to do and when to do it. And I saw it in, in Wolves, and I saw one team in Manchester United that has the same common problems of creative, being, being creative, of being creative. That's what I struggled with today. Having said that, Having said that, I think for how dominant Wolves were, it wasn't like Romero was rained on. And I think it's really important to remember that. I think we defended well today. I think Lindelof and Maguire did a good job on Jimenez, um, considering how good he is, apart from when he sent all three of them to the sweet shop with that little Cruyff turn. And on a different day, he probably does score. But apart from that, I thought Brandon Williams was bright again. I thought he was up and down that left flank like he has been in the last three games, previous three games, getting picked three times in a row, four times in a row now for him. Hopefully he gets to start at Liverpool. That'd be a really big plus for him to, to keep his place. I thought Bissaka did well defensively. But our problem area, which ended up starving our forwards, especially in the first half where I thought we were really bad, was just that midfield. It's far too slow. I looked at, I looked at, I looked at Wolves' shape. Right? They played a 5-2-3, yeah? And the two in the middle was Neves and Moutinho. And I'm thinking, we've got three in there. If, if you want to include Matter coming off from the 10 to make a three with, with Matic and Fred, we've got three against their two. And it looks the other way around. It looks, it looks like Wolves had more players in there. The way they knocked it about um, was just brilliant at, at times. Yes, they might not have got a shot at the end of it. They might have missed that last, you know, that last, that last touch to really, to really hurt us. Or we, 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 we snuck it out because we defended really well. But in that midfield area, I thought we just lost that battle. Um, and when they decided to let us have the ball, we just didn't have a clue. We just didn't have a clue. I think between Matic and Fred, there was so much sideways and passing and, 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 and backwards passing from both of them. I thought they were reluctant to pass it forward and pass it forward quickly. 
I know I spoke to Ricky in the last fan cam and he, he, he sort of said, look, Matic makes us better and he thought he had a really good game. It's, in the first half, I didn't see a good game from either Fred or, or, or Matic. I thought they were both really slow. Um, and in turn, that ended up starving our front three. Um, Matt had tried to get onto the ball. He, he tried to make things happen where he could, but it just wasn't happening. We wasn't holding onto the ball. And literally halfway through that first half, I was already like, just get half time. Just get half time. Traore, we managed to keep him fairly quiet. You're never going to keep him quiet for the whole game. He's too physical, too powerful. There were times he was just bouncing Fred off of him. I felt sorry for Fred at some times. Like, but what can you do against Traore? He's, he's that strong, he's that powerful. Not many people can go shoulder to shoulder with him. So we get into half time at nil nil, and you're thinking it's just so cagey. We come out second half. And I don't even think we was great second half as well. I think it was more of the same. It was more sideways football. And a very interesting thing, just in front of my seats, I don't know if you could see it on TV, like some, Matic passed the ball back and someone said to me, wrong direction, pass it forward, what's going on? And Matic just turned around and went, what? Like I'm keeping the ball sort of thing. Um, so a little bit of unrest there for Matic, but the goal comes, the goal comes and the goal comes. Was it against the runner player? I wouldn't say it was against the runner player. I think both teams were kind of in and out of the game and both teams were showing that they could nick it. I mean, I, you know, go, actually going back to the first half, Daniel James, sorry, he had two good opportunities. I thought, we, we played the long ball. It was like it was long ball FC, just hitting it over the top, hitting it into channels. It was almost like, right, we ain't got a midfield against these lot, let's just bypass. Um, because you've got to look at it, like Wolves are a good team. Wolves are, Wolves are further in their development than we are under Solskjaer, of course, un, under Nuno. I, I believe he's got them working, he's got them well drilled, he's got them knowing exactly what to do. So there's no shame in, 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 with our depletion in midfield. There's no shame in saying, look, we lost the midfield battle. It's not, I don't find that embarrassing. That's just a, a true reflection of where we are. I don't expect to, to outplay Wolves in the midfield because their midfield's better than us. It's as simple as that. What do you expect? So I kind of get why we had to hit the channels and go long and bypass that. Daniel James was in, probably should have done better. The second shot he had against Ruddy, I thought, could have done a little bit better, but probably slightly unfortunate. It's one of them ones that it can go in on a different day. But he seemed to be a threat. Um, and then, that, like I said, that takes him in the second half. Dan James was bright again. He had that left foot strike that went just wide. Um, maybe Matt could have come in on the end of it. And that brings us to the goal. Like I said, it didn't really come against the run of play. It was just, it was kind of a, uh, oh, you have it, we have it, you have it, we have it sort of game. Um, not with goal mouth action, but in terms of possession. And Martial does really well to, to, to spin the defender and set Matter in. And to be fair to Matter, man, like I said in the last game, I wanted him to start this game. I felt he deserved it against Norwich. And he's proved again today that he's got that little bit of, that not little bit, he has that quality. Do you know what I'm saying? In what he's, look, he's not going to be the future of Manchester United right now. Of course not. He's 31 going on 32, I think. But what he still possesses is quality. What he still possesses is decision making. And I'm just kind of putting out there, should he not be playing more often and should he not be playing in the more important games yes as fans it's taken us all different times lengths of times to come to this conclusion but you can only go on the output you're looking at what jesse lingard's been anonymous for the best part of 18 months you're looking at andreas Pereira, who has bags of energy but no end product most of the time angel gomez isn't getting a kick in the number 10. paul pogba has been out and is obviously not going to play in the number 10 so for me you're looking at matter matter is still the best player out of those those players that i mentioned bar pogba so he should be getting more game time and, you know, two goals, two assists against Norwich and a goal here tonight. I'd, I know it might sound crazy. I know it might sound absolutely crazy, but he should be getting more game time. Should he play against Liverpool? I think we should find a space for him. I really do. I know that might sound, might, might sound mad because we need legs, especially in midfield. Um, I get it. But I think we need to find a space. Yeah, all right. If you want to start Pereira for the legs and, and a game plan, Oli, that's fine. I get that. But I think you need to find space for players who are going to keep the ball, use the ball and make those decisive decisions at the right time. And I think Matter, um, with a bit of confidence behind him as well, because Oli started him two games in a row, can give him, can, can, can give us that, can give us that. So, look, I'm just happy to get through, relieved, relieved to get through. Um, it was a tight KG game, awful at times in terms of quality from our point of view. Um, and for all the possession that Wolves did have, they looked dangerous in some spells, but I have to commend our back four. I thought they, I thought they defended really well. Um, Harry Maguire got caught out once and, and got a yellow. But other than that, I thought him and Lindelof um, handled him and pretty well. Um, Williams, again, going from strength to strength. Man, this kid, I, I, he, he kind of ran out of gas towards the end, but you're playing against Traore, that's going to happen. Um, I thought he did well. I thought Romero did well as well. 
Um, and Martial did well when it mattered. You know, he wasn't involved in the game that much because the service just wasn't there. Again, Greenwood, same sort of thing. Very, very quiet for him. Um, and that, I just want to finish off on Rashford, man. I'm getting really worried because in the press conference, Solskjaer saying, I want to rest him. I want to give him a rest, but he's got bags of energy. Lad wants to play. Then he's in the best form of his life. Rash, Marcus Rashford is always going to make himself available for United. He's that sort of player. He wants to play every game. He wants to keep improving. And to be honest, in this type of season, in this type of form, I can see why he's been played so much because he's our top goal scorer and you want to play your top goal scorer. And the problem is we don't have the depth. We don't, we don't have the depth. But for me, I think we've got to be really careful. I think Solskjaer's got to be really careful in how he's using him because he's looking like he's going to get burnt out. We saw him play the back end of last season, almost the second half of last season with this recurring ankle injury. He just didn't look the same, the same Marcus. He was, he was getting jaded. He was tired. He needed that rest um, and he got it. And... He came back a different player, but now it looks like we're relying on him again too much. Maybe he could have, maybe he could have stayed on the bench. Why not bring on Chong? Hindsight's a wonderful thing, I get it, but I just don't want him to get burnt out. And obviously against Liverpool, we're going to need him. On to Liverpool, listen, anything could happen. <laughs> I know if you're looking at form and you're looking at all of the rest of the stuff, yes, Liverpool should annihilate us. We could go and get absolutely hammered. But at the same time, with Man United, you just never know. You just never know. Would I take a draw right now? Yes, I'll bite your hand off. I just, I just want to see us give a good account of ourselves. I don't mind losing the game. There's no shame in losing to Liverpool, especially with the stages that we're both at. But it's, 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 it's the type of performance. I want to see a game plan. I want to see us implement something, kind of like what we did against City. It's going to be very, very difficult. But look, I remember when we used to be way better than Liverpool. And Liverpool used to come to Old Trafford, put in a performance. We used to go to Anfield, get rolled over. It can happen. It's a derby game. Anything can happen. Logic will tell you that it shouldn't, but this is football, man, and anything can happen. So let's just give a good account of ourselves and give ourselves the basis to play. First 15, 20 minutes in that game, first half an hour, shall I say, is, is crucial. I think we, we have to score first to get something out of the game. I can't see us coming back from a losing position to win. Um, but listen, up the Reds, man, we have to go for it. We have to go for it. My man of the match today is Matter. I got he, he decided the game. And we finally beat Wolves and he's the player who got the goal. So I'm going to give it to Matt. Um, could have been Brandon Williams as well. I thought he was good today. Um, but there wasn't too many candidates there because it was a poor game. It was a poor game. But we won. Let me know who your man of the match was. See you on Sunday. Well, there you have it. 2-0 loss. Um, we was all on about not being embarrassed, not being on the receiving end of a, of a big score island. That we, that we wasn't. That's what I can say. Um, it's difficult to pick out too much positives from a performance like that, but I think it's important that we don't go overboard and maybe be overcritical. And that's not lowering expectations, that's just a realistic um, place to start, really, um, with what I'm about to say. So I think the first 10 minutes were actually all right in the game. I think we, we, we looked OK, we looked, we looked solid. I think, you know, Liverpool wasn't at their best. But for me, and this was, the, this was almost the most annoying thing for me about this game, is the fact that we concede from a set piece and the manner of the set piece, zonal. And I know people might say, yeah, but then after that, they didn't really do anything from all the corners that they had. I don't care. If we're spending £80 million on Harry Maguire, right, you cannot tell me that in games like this, when you're playing against a Virgil van Dijk or a, a, a commanding centre-half who was a massive threat in the air from corners, you're not, you can't tell me that our most expensive signing this summer and captain shouldn't be on him. I don't get it. Or even if it, or, or Matic, somebody of physical stature who's good in the air should be on Virgil van Dijk. That is basic black and white. You do not have to have a UEFA A license, pro license, all of this bullshit to understand that. Virgil van Dijk is fantastic in the air. Let's not give him a free run against Fred Williams and Andreas because they're the, they're the, the, free, the free smaller players that are blocking. And then you've got the big lads in Lindelof, Maguire, and say Matic as the last line in front of De Gea. Why? I don't understand that. It made no sense. And we spoke about it before the, the game. Yes, you can lose here heavily. You can get outclassed. You can get done by a bit of Mane manage, ma magic or a bit of Salah, Super Salah, or whatever it is, you can get done by that. But when you concede after 10 minutes from a corner that could be easily prevented by actually putting someone on Van Dijk, for me, you're asking for trouble. And that's what we saw. And then even from that, we go on to the De Gea situation. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, look, I had to look at it a couple of times. I know it was right in front of me and, and I thought straight away it was a foul. But when I looked back at it, I saw the replays at halftime. I was like, on a different day, that might not have been. I think it, it just about it just about wasn't enough, I think, 
Van Dijk's left shoulder comes across. But on a different day, you don't get those. But okay, fair enough. The right decision was made there. But they, they, they kept getting at us. And, you know, Liverpool, you know what they're like. They started to get at us and then you're thinking, can we hold firm? And to be fair, we grew back into the game. Towards the end of the first half, I thought we, we, we did okay. Pereira had a shot um, that was that was an, an easy save. He nearly got on the end of a cross. I think it was from Dan James. I can't remember. It was down the other end, so it was hard to see. But he slid in and nearly, nearly got it. Um, so towards the end of the half, I thought we did okay. Into the second half now, Jesus, it should have been four or five. Liverpool come right out the traps. I think Henderson hit the post. Um, Salah had, Mane had a chance. He would have scored on a different day. They were raining on us. And I literally was about to just... I was going to tweet the next goals incoming. Incoming. It felt like it was coming any second. And somehow we managed to weather the storm. Um, and then Pereira's getting into some good, decent positions. Um, but was very, very wasteful. I've got a big up Fred. I thought Fred today... Was, was really good um, in, in, in a very difficult game. I thought he was really good today. I thought his energy was good. I thought the way he used the ball was good. His intensity and his passing was good. I don't want to big up Matic as well. I think Matic did okay. Um, I thought he was commanding. I thought it, at, at times where, 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 where he could, I thought he was composed wherever he could. Um, and then we get that guilt as chance that falls to Martial, man. It, as soon as it, it goes to him, I'm thinking he's going to score. He's going to score. <laughs> And he blazes it into Rose Ed. And, and I think that sums it up. Fred had a couple of shots as well. Um, one at Allison's near post, which went wide, and another way forced to save from Allison. Probably don't want it falling to Fred there. But it just it, it highlighted today all of the problems that we have, especially creatively. We couldn't get that guilt edge chance. And I felt like Liverpool, again, we spoke about it on the road trip on the way up. It's like you can be on top of Liverpool in little periods, but they've always got them gears to go up. They've always got them, you know. A little bit about them that says, Well, all right, we're cool, we'll raise it up a notch. And I think we did put them under a little bit of pressure, but I never felt that we would get that proper chance. And when it did come, it only came to Martial, and like I said, he put it over. We huffed and puffed. I think the changes I, I would have put Matter on early earlier. I think the fact that we were contemplating, contemplating whether Matter should have started, and then we saw kind of Pereira struggling for quality wise after getting into great positions. Um, I think that's where maybe the game, I don't want to say was, was, was lost, but I think Matter would have brought a little bit more calmness and, and a bit more astuteness, especially with the decision making, especially with the positions that Pereira got into. And it was about game management, man. Like I said, we, we, we were sitting ducks as soon as you concede after 10 minutes after, after, after a corner. And look, I don't want to go too overwhelmed. I thought Brandon Williams did well. I thought he showed fight. I thought he showed passion, which is good. One thing I have to say is that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question that. I won't question that about the players today. I did I, I didn't see players out there bottling it. I didn't see players out there who didn't want it. I just saw players that were far inferior to Liverpool. Um, to be honest with you, um, and now with this Rashford situation where it's saying he's out for two to three months. I mean they haven't confirmed that yet. But if that's true, it's an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. Utter shambles, and it just shows. We saw last year the burnout that was caused to Marcus Rashford. We saw it. Now, Marcus Rashford is always going to come out and say, I want to play for Man United. He's always going to put himself through the pain barrier. Players need to be protected from themselves, especially when you're as good a pro as, as, as Marcus Rashford. Oli, the coaching staff, the medical team, they need to be saying, Marcus, mate, you're going to do yourself a worse injury. Take him out the firing line. If you need to take him out for four weeks so we can go and get his injury seen to, go and get this unintrusive... Um, unintrusive um, operation that he needs if, if you're going to go and if you're going to take him out for four weeks a month month and a half to do that halfway through the season or early in the season do it do it I get it he has to play a lot of games because who else are you going to put in I get it it just shows that we're, we're lacking in depth but you can't allow someone to play through that much pain barrier to only then ruin himself even more because now two to three months without Rashford McTominay out for a while Pogba out for a while Bruno Fernandes still not here it's not looking good. It's looking very bleak. Now, top four was not going to be decided here today. You know, the fact that the results helped us along the way, it kind of gave us a free hit, like what Mars was saying on the way down, on the way up. That if we did lose today, the fact that we're still in it is great. Ch Chelsea lost and, um, you know, their next game is Arsenal, Spurs inconsistent, etc, etc. But if we're looking at ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to replace Marcus Rashford's goals. He's in, no matter what you think, he's in the form of his life. Is Martial going to chip him with more? Is Mason going to step up to, to the plate? A lot of pressure on him. I just, I, I, I don't know. The jury's out. The jury's out. So, very disappointing here today. 
it could have been more. I'm not going to blame Dan James um, for the last goal. We were, we, were, we were going for it. I'd rather, I'd rather concede a second going for it like we were trying to, even though we couldn't make that guilt edge chance, than just sit there with Liverpool camp, you know, having us camped in our, in our, in our box with, no, with not asking any questions of them. They answered the questions very easily. Were Liverpool really in trouble? Were Liverpool really at risk of conceding in the last minute? Probably not. It was more the hope that killed us, but at least we gave it a go. It sounds like a bit of a defeatist attitude and a, people might say, Flex, you know, that was a, a shambolic performance. It was this, it was that. I get all the negative sides of the performance. I do, because in parts, we weren't good. In parts, we were completely outplayed. In parts, I thought Liverpool absolutely dominated us. And like I said, especially those first 10, 15 minutes of the first half, it looked like that second goal was coming. But I want to give a little bit of credit where credit's due in very difficult situations. Like I said, I thought Fred stepped up to the plate and got us ticking, got us playing. Um, and we got into some decent positions. We were just wasteful and just not good enough. It's as simple as that. We're miles off Liverpool. And I think these are the games where we need to have a bit of sense about it. We can't, we can't go overboard. I think it was everyone, most United fans, were pretty much looking at a damage limitation job and that is what we got. It was about damage limitation. If Liverpool were at the races fully, we could have lost three or four nil today. Um, let's, let's be real, uh, we, we could have. Um, and, and we set off on a bad foot from the corner. You're always asking for trouble. We said the first half an hour was crucial. We needed to not concede in that half an hour, especially when it wasn't from open play. It, it hurts that bit more. And I think going forward to play to play zonal marking against, you know, you, you're almost saying to Van Dijk, here you go, mate, here's a clear path to the goal. Because he's going to, barge past Williams, he's going to barge through Fred, he's going to barge through Pereira, which is what happened. And then he rose highest for an easy header. So, obviously a disappointing day at the office, but we've got to bounce back against Burnley. Arsenal play Chelsea, there's points to be dropped there. Um, we need to just keep going and, and, and try and find a way out of this um, without, without Rashford. Yes, we've got players who hopefully can step up. It means that there's going to be more game time for Greenwood, which is obviously fantastic. But we, roll, we go on to, to midweek. Disappointing. Peace. Absolutely shocking performance. And I, I, you know what? I'm not going to stand here and start shouting and getting angry and, and all of that. I'm just going to break it down for what it really is. See you later, my friend. Take care. This is, a, is the truest representation of where we are as a football club. You can go to Liverpool, you can get peppered up. You can get banged up 3-0 at half-time by Manchester City by great, amazing players. Chris Wood. Ben Mee. Jeff Hendricks, Dwight McNeil. This is no offence, I, I mean, to Burnley Football Club, but you know exactly how they're going to play. When we played against them on Boxing Day, what we did well was that we nullified them by winning the first and second balls and it took away their physicality. If you take that away from Burnley, you're, you, you, you're almost certainly going to beat them. But there was chances to be taken uh, in the first 15, 20 minutes. I thought we started quite brightly, to be honest with you. But when those chances aren't taken, I'm, I'm going to start with Martial. Martial has to score. I don't think he was at the races today at all. And, and it wasn't like he was starved of service in the initial 15, 20 minutes. He has to score. That's the first thing. Mata, um, he should have scored. Right foot. And then you're looking at, right, what we, did, what, we, what we did very well at Turf Moor, what we didn't do today, is application. It's taking responsibility for each other's, each other's performances, individual performances. Ball gets knocked in from the long free kick. Maguire, 85 million we've paid. Captain now, 80 million, 85 million, whatever it is. He's captain. He doesn't know where Chris Wood is, lets him get in. Matic, out jumped by the two Burnley players, don't know who they were. That just shows you're playing into Burnley's strengths and you wasn't at the races. Then you're getting into half time. What sort of reaction are we going to see from this team? Nothing. Nothing. We weren't even beaten down the door. What did Nick Pope really have to do? I saw that he got voted man of the match. I'm like, really? I don't, didn't see him making save after save. Anything he did touch was routine. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the patterns of play and the style of play on, uh, in this team right now. They looked clueless. They looked nervous. I'm seeing De Gea get the ball when we keep playing out from goal kicks or playing it short to him. Looking at Maguire. Oh, OK, you have it. Coming back to De Gea, giving it to, to Phil Jones. Okay, you have it. Going back to De Gea, then just kicking it long up to Martial. He's got two big ass centre halves up his ass. It made no sense. The style, the, the patterns of plays, the, the 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 transitions, they're all wrong. Dan James, it's not his fault that he's been thrusted into this position. But we're so Fredbear. He's he's starting to look like the player that's that's from the championship who's making that step up. He needs that time to grow. I feel sorry for players coming into this team to try and develop. 
Mason Greenwood on at half time in, 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 in place of Pereira, who was shocking again. Again. And do you know what? Do you know what? I'm not even going to. I will criticise Oli for keep picking him, that's, that's, that's fair enough. But when you look around the rest of the quality around the squad, he's only going to put Lingard in there instead, or maybe Mata, who obviously is a better player in that situation, but that leaves the wide area still with a player who's at a sub-par level. We've got so many players that are sub-par that are just not good enough. Now, the funny thing is, is that in the league, I think we're still actually fifth. I haven't even checked, but it just shows how poor the league is and we're still technically in with a, with a shout for top four. But forget it with this squad. Forget it. We can't put a run together for shit. You're talking about Bur Burnley. I, I, I sat next to Miles and, and he agreed. I, I, I said to him before the game, I said, Miles, seriously, Burnley are, are such, a bad such a bad team, you know. When I was at Turf Moor, I just couldn't believe how poor they were. They literally just give you the ball at all costs. They look, look to hit it long. We saw, we saw one team play how, how they always play and know what to do in terms of Burnley because they don't have any other dimension of playing and a typical United. We, we basically saw two typical teams, a typical performance from United that, you know, once we don't get that first goal when, that the pressure deserves, we, 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 we run out of ideas. And I tell you what, Burnley, even at 1-0, they were just comfortable. We didn't lay siege to, the goal, um, to their goal. And the second goal, look, from where I was sitting, it was very difficult to see just how well De Gea should have done. So I'm not going to bash him and say it's an absolute disgrace you should never get beaten from there because I haven't re-seen it I've only seen it once and it looks like a rocket from where I was it, it, I, I couldn't see so I'm not going to do that but when I see it I heard, I've heard some people saying that he should have done better but again the reaction that like Burnley just came here with 4-4-2 two, two organised banks of four two strikers up front are going to work their asses off and they just they just outbattled us they didn't do anything special they can't do anything special it's Burnley there's going to be people out there saying Solskjaer this, Solskjaer that. What's very clear today, which, which was the biggest cheer of the day, was the fans being united against the owners. People standing up, speaking about Ed Woodward, speaking about the Glazers, and there's been some, some big fan cams about that. And yeah, some of the songs they're singing with some of the words to the song, I think, if, if taken quite literally, are, are a little bit overboard. You know, you don't want to sing about people dying and, and things like that or being killed, anything silly like that. But the message in terms of people wanting these people out of our club and wanting change it was there and you know there was a song ringing out round round the stadium stand up if you hate the glazers and it was the first time uh, for a long while that everyone in the stadium has, has stood up and done that you know and, and that was the only positive that come out of tonight the fact that the fans are now starting to put some real pressure um or, or make some noise at least the beginning the beginning murmurs of noises to to, to to put the pressure on. I mean, it was an absolute disgrace today. I mean, you're talking Burnley. Every time we get a chance to to gain on the top four, we just bottle it. We just bottle it. It was almost like the conditions for Burnley were good. It's cold, it's wet, it's foggy, it's dark. It just, you know, it was just an absolute shambles. And we just played into their hands. We just absolutely played into their hands. And, 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 and again, the zonal marking again. I saw, I think it was Fred wrestling one of the big center halves on, on a corner. Why are we persisting with that? Why are we persisting with that? You know, it's an absolute embarrassment. Whether you're Solskjaer in, whether you're Solskjaer out, we can all agree that the real issue is upstairs. Um, but on Solskjaer and, and, and his in-game management, I, taking off Brandon Williams and bringing on Shaw, I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. I'm not going to crucify him. I'm not going to say Ollie's at this and Ollie's at that. I can say I didn't get the substitution. Is that, is that just a representation of where we are in terms of there is no, there's no, nothing else to bring on? I don't know. I, I, I just think it's a poor decision. Why are you just going to bring on a like for like? You bring on a defender with 2-0 down. I didn't get that. It wasn't, unless, he's, unless I'm mistaken and he was injured. And then that leads me into, into the, the, the January transfer window and just how, how much we're screaming out for players. This is the second game we've played without Rashford and the second game in a row we've been pumped 2-0, right? And without reply, couldn't score. Martial looks like he's low on confidence, doesn't look like he's the player that we can be. We, we know that he's hot and cold and can, can be a bit sometime-ish. We know he's got bags of ability, but we don't see it any, a, anywhere near on a consistent level. We know that. We've got Rashford out for, let's face it, the, the rest of the season probably. And is this what it's going to be like without Marcus Rashford? Because if this is a sign what it's going to be like without him, then we are, we are finished. We are finished. You know, we're, we're umming and ahhing about spending an extra 10 million on, on, on Bruno Fernandes or 15 million, whatever it is. We paid 80 million for Jaime Maguire. We paid 50 million for Fred. Are you telling me that Bruno Fernandes is not 10 or 15 million pound more than Fred in price? Is that what you're telling me? 
because that's that's how the club are, are going on. There's there's rumours that the club actually doesn't actually have the money to spend. it. They've had to go and get loans and stuff like that. You're hearing all sorts. But you're seeing how much money is made at this club. There is money there to be spent. Why are we not spending it? It's an absolute joke. And now we find ourselves scrimping and scramping when we should have done this in the summer. All of what we're seeing here is an accumulation of, yes, all of the bad things that have happened in the, in the, in the six or seven years or so. But this summer, last summer, sorry, was a chance to put mo a lot of that right in terms of the correct recruitment. And we didn't do it. On top of making bad decisions, which I hold my hands up and say, do you know what? They, no, do you know what? Making bad decisions in terms of not reinforcing. I don't mind Oli having the, the guts to say, I don't want this player, I don't want that player. You don't fit into what I, what I, how I want to play. Or you don't want to play here, your commitment levels are not here. I want players that want to be here. That's fine. But you cannot let certain players go, most of these players go, if you're not going to bring in replacements. You say, no, you have to stay. Because look at us, we're depleted, we're a mess. An absolute mess. And it hurts, it hurts. I, you know, a lot of fans saying that they've just got nothing left anymore. Having said all of that, having said all of that, we're still not miles off top four. But I just feel like a bit of an idiot even continuously discussing it because it's got that bad and we're this inconsistent that I can't see us being able to, 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 to grab it with two hands. We go to, well, Watford or Tranmere next. God knows where that will be. Who, who cares, really? The next game in the league will be, will be Wolves. If we play like that against Wolves, you know, it was tight against them in the FA Cup the other day. It, it, could, it could be curtains. It really, really, really could. Um, it's just one of them. Let me know your views and your thoughts on, on that horrendous performance and just where Manchester United go from here because if we do not get reinforcements in in this window, I'm telling you now, it is going to get worse and worse and worse. And to be fair, even if we do get the reinforcements, if we get just Bruno Fernandes by himself, like I said last week, like I said on Sky Sports, he's not going to be the answer to all the problems. He's just not. But he's a star and he's someone that we're crying out for in that creative midfield area. So, yeah, I'm out of here, guys. So we're just finishing off here at Prenton Park. Um, look, at, Sorry, just quickly, look at this. This is how bad it was. Um, it was starting to cut up a little bit. Luckily, it wasn't raining as the game was on. I'm thinking, you know, they've, they've thrown sand down to try and suck some of the moisture up. Um, and it had, it, this had the potential to be such a banana skin, also with the pitch as well being um, in that condition. But it was a very comfortable afternoon. First of all, eight, nine minutes, I was thinking this is a bit uncomfortable, but we came through it. Um, I think they were putting us in, in some pressure in, down their left-hand side um, and just getting in at us, really. But I think we had to just settle down and the first goal was always going to be... Um, a big thing in a game like this, especially with Tranmere looking to get some confidence and, you know, it's their cup final. And it comes from Harry Maguire, man. What a banger. I mean, yes, it's taken a little bit of a deflection, but I thought um, a decent way to announce himself, you know. you know, Do we need a striker in January now? May as well just stick him up there. Maybe maybe we should do that. But, I mean, even then, the second goal came very quickly after that. Delot was with a very good finish. Um, and then Jesse Lingard coming up, you know, scoring trumps. Is this our level? League One, should we be playing in this? Maybe we should, I don't know. But I think the goals just kept coming and coming. I think, what was it, 5-0 by half-time? Um, first of all, I, well, I say first of all. Secondly, I've got to just kind of hold my hands up in terms of when I saw the line-up, I just saw the amount of defenders there and I just assumed we'd be playing sort of a 5-3-2. And we didn't. We went with a 3, a 4, a 1 and a 2. So to be fair, I hold my hands up. I got that wrong. Um, but I think what Man United did today was pretty much what we expect Manchester United to be doing to a team uh, like Tranmere, no disrespect, but I think the reason why we're happy today is because we haven't seen our team perform against the teams that we should be beating. We haven't seen it, and we definitely haven't seen six goals anytime soon. The closest we've got to that was probably Solskjaer's first game, which was 5-1, I think, at, at Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, so, I, I, when Sir Phillips scored as well, I'm telling you, mate, it was scenes oh, in there. Your goals. Yeah, man. <laughs> Where was it? It was, it was that goal over there that is now no longer in the ground. It's upside down. But yeah, it was there. Um, so when Phil Jones and Jesse Lingard are scoring, you know that um, Man United have arrived. You know what I'm saying? Um, and with the penalty in the second half, well won by Chong. Um, Lingard wanted it and the lads went, nope, that's Mason's. Um, so it was interesting to see what was going to happen there in terms of how they dealt with him. Um, and Mason takes it with his, I can't even call it his weaker foot, his equal foot, left and right footed Mason, that's what he does. Um, more songs coming from the United fans today in the away end. It was loud, um, letting flares off um, in protest against the Glazers. And Ed Woodward, I don't think that movement's going to stop. Um, and, and fair enough, I think it should be vocal, it should be out there. Um, there was more of that in the, in the stands today. So look, you can't get too carried away today. Look, it's nice to, to, to score six goals, of course it is. We 
we don't often do it and it's it's a nice way to take your mind off it for a day of how bad we have been so it's important to look at that but you it's, it's Tranmere Rovers man they're like they're 21st in league one you you know if there's Man United fans or, or the players if he, I, I haven't heard what Solskjaer said I hope he hasn't said anything crazy after this game I hope he hasn't said well, the fact that we've come here and kept a clean sheet and 1-6-0 means that we're making tremendous progress. I don't want to hear that. I hope he just keeps a lid on it. We've done what we needed to do on an awful pitch. Very professional performance. We've got six goals. Fantastic. But the bigger games are yet to come. I'm not saying that it means we have to beat City now. Look, we're 3-1 down to City in the Cowboy Cup semi-final. I'm um, second leg coming up. That's for me, personally. I, I know we can always believe and things can happen in football, but it's about damage limitation for me. Just go there, give a good account of yourself, just don't get stuffed. Um, the big game is, is the Wolves game. So I hope when I go back and look at Solskjaer's press conference from post-game, hopefully he's not saying anything crazy or anything weird, because at the end of the day, yes, we've, uh, we've got the job done. Very professional performance, great to score six goals, um, but we can't get carried away. My band the match, uh, it's quite difficult really, because I think it was just a good team performance. I, um, I give it to Greenwood taking a pen right foot. No, I'll give it to Maguire. I'll give it to Maguire. He got his first goal um, for the club. Commanding performance. I thought he, he did well. You know, speaking about the game at application, I thought that Luke Shaw played quite well. Um, Matic. I, it's hard to give too much praise because, you know, you're playing against uh, such a lesser of, of opposition. You can't really judge, you know, how well the players actually did. But you can only talk about what was in front of us. So I will talk about some individual performances. Uh, Marshall was with, with a pick of the goals for me. I think it did take a little bit of a deflection, um, but the lot, the lot strike was was fantastic as well, and so was Jesse. So actually, yeah, maybe maybe Jesse's just picking a bunch, um, following Maguire's, I'd say, because that is, is was a fantastic goal as well. Um, Romero commanding as per usual. I, you know, when you get into four and five, that's when you start looking for the keeper and saying that he deserves his clean sheet. And I thought there was a time when we was under a little bit of pressure in the first half. He came out, punched it. Something that you don't always associate with the hair, so that was good. Um, fans sung his name um, all, all, all evening as well. So, yeah, fantastic from, from Romero as well. So, good for him. Uh, but my man of the match, yeah, I, I think Maguire just, just shaded that. Um, good to see Oli make the changes early. Um, get Maguire off. Um, who else to take off? Get Martial off. We know we can't afford any injuries to him. We need him firing. He got his goal. Get him off. Um, Fred with a half. Get Matic off. We know we're going to need him. So, yeah, game management from Wally, fantastic. And like I said, which we'll talk about in the player ratings, I hold my hands up because I did think the tactics would, was completely wrong. And I got the wrong end of the stick, sort of thinking that it was a, it was a five at the back. So, fair play to Oli. He got his spot on today. And we did a professional job in what could have been a massive banana skin. 3pm 3, 3 kickoff on BT. Everyone watching. If we would have lost here today, the season, oh, I don't know, it would, it would have been banter city, banter city. But Phil Jones getting on the score sheet, good for him. And Jesse Lingard, you can't really ask for, ask for much more than that. I thought Christmas had already gone, but it looked like it come back again. So that's my man of the match, Harry Maguire. Mars is on the muddy ass pitch, look at him. Don't get all mud stuck on you, so look, you know what I mean? You've got to get back in my car afterwards, and you're going to put all mud on it. This guy. Anyway, I'm out of here. Peace. There you go, man. Um, we've managed to win here on the night, but obviously lost the tie here at Etihad. It's absolutely freezing, by the way. I'm going to start with the positives. Obviously, the first positive is that we've managed to win on the night. I was saying just compete. Um, let's not embarrass ourselves. Let's not give ourselves, you know, a, a huge mountain to climb in, in terms of trying to draw some confidence. Um, secondly, I thought we defended well. I thought we defended well. I thought... Um, that the back five, yes, I thought we was too defensive, and that's. But I'm on the positive side at the moment, just looking at the positives. Um, but I thought we were we were fairly organised, and I thought we dealt with a lot of what City had to throw at us, apart from apart from the first 15 minutes when De Gea uh, was absolutely superb. Um, so those are my two positives. I don't want to call these negatives, but let's just call it the rest. Um, the rest. I think City were there for the taking today. I think apart from the first 15, 20 minutes where De Gea was unbelievable and made some great saves, City spurned a lot of opportunities. And then they started to do things that were uncharacteristic of City. They started giving the ball away. They, st they stopped pressing. They were loose with the ball, making mistakes that they don't normally make. It was almost like a little bit of nervousness was creeping in. And we, we did well to kind of settle down. Um, won the free kick in the left-hand channel. Um, and Matic gets a goal out of nothing. Let's face it, before that happened, I, there was no attacking threat from us. I can't lie. Um, I thought we, we did OK, um, like I said, defensively with our shape and our organisation. But the, the onus on the ball, the impotence on the ball was poor. We, we offered nothing. Um, and the goal come from nowhere. Hear some shouting down there. <laughs> it's all the drunk lot coming up. Um, yeah, we offered nothing. We offered absolutely nothing. But when you get a goal out of nothing, that 
that can springboard. We spoke about getting the first goal here and that'll be crucial. And we got that. And after that, City looked a bit shaky. They did. They, look, they looked nervous. They looked like they were there to be got at. Um, and like I said at the beginning of this, is that we defended really well. But the biggest disappointment was obviously not just not getting the second goal and forcing it to, to penalties, etc., or winning a tie. The biggest thing for me was that like I said, we, if we were a more organised team, if we were a better team, if we had better transitions um, and more, uh, you know, a better style of play, then I feel I feel that we could have got at City today because there were chances to be got. They weren't playing good, so that that hurts me. That annoys me. I've got to talk about Jesse Lingard because I actually felt sorry for him today. I mean, I just looked at how he was playing and I just thought, what has happened? to this player, it's really sad to see, it really is. I mean, he should have got taken off way earlier. I'm seeing, I'm hearing uh, some some reports, people texting me saying that Oli was having a go at him, saying you know, one more and you're off, but he should have he should have come off. He should have come off a lot earlier. I, I don't know what's going on. And for me, it should have been Mata who come on. I, I, we, we know we, we've got trouble in keeping the ball, creating chances, and Mata's just going to look after the ball and pick those right passes, and, and he brings on Pereira instead of him. I thought Greenwood, was un unfortunate to be substituted, but I could see Solskjaer's thinking in that, I'm not going to lie. Um, although Dan James, he came on and had one turn of pace, I think he got Rodri booked. And then after that, he kind of went missing as well. I was disappointed with Martial. I thought that his movement wasn't great. I don't think he, his tenacity was there. Yes, the service to him was poor. 100% agree with that. He had no service. But I thought that um, I needed more for him. And I, and I worry about him stepping up in this, in this nine role without the support of Rashford around him. It's almost like... The rash was there, it was just a whole different dynamic. Another negative for me was the fact that, yes, we went with, the, with that shape, with the, with the 5 3 2 or the 3 5 2, but it was actually a five. There was a flat five at times, you know? And here we go, they go they're going to sing it, you know? <laughs> your time, it's your time, it's your time, it's your time, it's your time. What can we do? Um, hopefully, Villa go and do them over, you know what I mean? Hopefully, they do. But um, at the end of the day, it, it was it wasn't to be because we I think when you felt when you felt that we got that goal the first goal did we really come across that we were going to get the second not for me I, I just I just couldn't see us clicking into gear and then Matic for all the great work he did when he was actually playing well I'll take my hat off to him he was he was having a good game great strike as well the stupidity kicks in and that and that is why. I don't want to just scapegoat Matic, but we have to. He put us on the back foot there. I'm not saying that we were all over City before he got sent off, but with 11 men on the pitch and we keep pushing, we might have been able to try and try and find gears to, to, to go up. And with him making such a stupid foul so far away from the goal, so far, it wasn't even like they were clean through. It's a stupid foul. And more importantly, he's now missing for Wolves. And yeah, you can say what you want about Matic. He's coming and I think he's done all right. He's, he's been the, the kind of the forgotten man this season until McTominay got injured and we've, we've had to rely on him. And I think he's had some very good performances and another one and another good performance here. But now he's not in the, in the, in the game for Wolves and you can see what our midfield's like in, 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 in Lingard, Pereira and Fred. Awful. That's just not going to be good against the likes of Matinho and Neves and, and whoever else they, they, that Wolves put out in that, in that position. So that worries me. Even more important on, on Bruno Fernandes coming in, that's another positive, obviously. The fact we can look forward to that game, having not have been battered here. I haven't heard Solskjaer's press conference as yet and, and his post-match thoughts, but I can imagine it'll be along the lines of the boys did really well, we executed the game plan to perfection um, and I'm really proud of them and they did excellently. I wouldn't say they did excellently. I don't think it was a great performance. I think that Man City could have put it to bed very early. Man City squandered a lot of chances. That Raheem Sterling one in the second half as well, we put that over the over the bar, um, which came from our mistake. I think it was, was that from Jesse giving the ball away and then they went on the counter-attack? I can't remember. I seem to remember that happening. I think he gave the ball away when we when we was in a, in a decent area, makes a bad pass, and then they're running up the other side and Sterling's in. I was going to go mad. Like, I was already going mad when Sterling was running through. I thought Bissaka defended really well against Sterling, as per usual. It's almost like Sterling sort of says, I don't want to go up against him. I don't want to try and, uh, and, and literally get past him. I need to pop it off or try and keep cutting inside, which, is, which was good for him. I thought Maguire and Lindelof did well, apart from Maguire's. I think he made one mistake uh, where he tried to pass it across, but then he made up for it straight away and got the ball. Should have scored a header in the second half. He had a great chance with the header as well. Um, but Brandon Williams, man, I want to I want to commend him. I thought he was superb. The decision making, um, his tidiness on the ball as well, and his touch, and 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 he picks out the right pass when when he needs to. I, I just like what he's doing. I'm really really happy to see Brandon Williams doing so well. So that's the positives. At the end of the day. We're not going to celebrate a 1-0 here because I think that, that really is a bit sad. But we have to look at 
you know, the fact that we didn't get battered um, and technically that's two wins. <laughs> that's two wins at the Etihad this season, albeit we've lost the tie. So we can't really celebrate that because that's just embarrassing. We've lost the tie. That's how it goes. But the, on, on, on to the bigger things now. The Carabao Cup's done. It's, it's finished. It was a nice little run. Um, getting to the semi-final and obviously we come up against a, a way better team in City and we couldn't get the job done. The damage was done in that first half, like the guy said in the, in the fan comes earlier. That that 3-0 in the first half was um, w w what the problem was. So for me, roll on Wolves. Roll on to Wolves. Let's let's get the job done. Bruno Fernandes, welcome. You can see our, no, our current number 10s in Lingard, Pereira, um, Mata also, who, who was probably the best out of those two, but Bruno Fernandes probably looking at it thinking, I've got my work cut out and we're here for you, Bruno. Get straight in that team and get us ticking, man. Please, beg you, beg you. My man of the match could go to De Gea, man, because I think he, 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 he kept us in the game when the game could have been out of sight in the first 15 minutes. I, I would like to give it to Brandon Williams because he did really well. Would I give it to Brandon Williams? Youngster. I don't know. It's between them two. I'm, I'm not going to choose because I think they're both equally <coughs> as important. I thought Brandon Williams was fantastic. But the Haya literally kept us in that game and, and gave us a springboard to actually get a half decent result and made us weather that storm. So that's my two men of the match. Let me know who yours is or who 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 you're gonna choose. Because like I said, I, I couldn't I couldn't choose. I couldn't choose Miles. I had to I had to choose both. I had to choose both. Bruno Fernandez, Saturday. Roll it on. <laughs>